and we'll climb to in order to reach the mm -hmm. top of Montessori. But it's really hard to keep going when all you want to do is stop and look behind you. Cross the sand. I mean the snow, but looks just like the sand. And what's the village down below? Zapada. And Dolomiti is on the right. Over there. It is 7.55 in the morning, the temperature is 9 degrees, we are in the Dolomites. Check out this panorama, it's amazing. Going to the top of that mountain, over there. Start from here, uh -huh. we will do this trail, uh -huh. 116 until this pass. Yep. And then we will take another trail on the other side of the mountain and we will climb to, in order to reach the top mm -hmm. of Monte Sierra. And how long do we actually have to do the rock climbing? Excuse me? The, the rock climbing? Just uh, on the other side of the okay. this face of this mountain. Cool. How long will, will it take uh, us? Three, three hours, we hope. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it took a lot more than three hours. But about that later. For now, listen to the forest. This is where the climb starts. Get the cable and everything. Let's hit it. So here the trail is also marked with red signs like that. And it's time to do a bit more imagination by the face. <laughs> Yesterday we were a bit further down the mountain and I saw wild strawberries and here now I see wild blueberries. This is wild blueberry. In July-ish time, maybe August, you'll have berries. So it's possible to forage here too. Over there, you have to climb the ropes. Another turn, another view, another mountain. Now off into the pine wood. And the last bit of snow. <laughs> we are in the middle of May. Yeah, just, in May there's still snow. Just, uh, yeah, no, the reverse. Oh, it's it supposed to be more. To do this Too much snow. <laughs> This is called a little man. So it's a pile of rocks to mark the way that you're going the right way. So it's the shape and the color. So that lets you know that you are still going the right way. There it is. And this must be a dry riverbed. Where has the river gone? Now that is the strangest flower I've seen so far. A spiky affair. So pretty. So we've been climbing almost vertically and here there's a trail for the cars. God knows where the rock comes from. And every now and then there are signs of cows. 
There's a cow pool. There. See, there's cows up here. Like, I need sticks to get up here. And some cows just walk around. Disgusted. It's running water over there, presumably. Presumably for the cows. Wherever they are. And over there, there's a cow shed. But why are the cows indoors? Why are they not outside? What a place to be a cow, huh? I wouldn't mind being a cow here. I wonder if that water is drinkable. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, the locals drink it, so this is drinkable. Oh, maybe not. He spat it out. <laughs> now he's coughing. I hope he won't die. <laughs> How did the water taste? Is it drinkable? I was just gaffing for other reason. Oh, okay. Yes, it's drinkable. I mean, I suppose. You're not going we to will die. See, if I die, it, it means it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a dry river, but after all, we walked down there. So just across over there, and there was no water. But up here, there is water. Here it gets pretty steep. <laughs> there are no more marks here. This is just for the alpinists. So it's crazy enough to go up there. Okay, that was a lie. I found a mark. So the trail is still marked. Just very, very steep. A whole lot of ants. About four years ago, there was a massive storm. And it felled a lot of trees like that one. And there's still a lot here as well. Most of them have been cleared away since. But a few are still lying around. Because of the volume of the damage. A lot of the hiking trails were closed for up to two years. But now thankfully they open again. Most of them. And the trail continues to climb up. And gently rises above the tree line. From here, we start to see the amazing mountains around us. Until the path goes like this. And then it's like this most of the way. Rebuilding a stone man that's collapsed. Oh yeah, and we found some people over there in the canyon. That's the only people we've seen so far. And we probably will not see any more. More snow over there. And a lot of landslides. That's our way that way. But it's really hard to keep going when all you want to do is stop and look behind you. Here's the ice. Well, wow, snow. This line here is a big blast, refusing to melt in the sun across the sand. I mean the snow, but looks just like the sand. We need to go up that way. That's our way. Let's try it. I just nearly slid down this whole way. The snow is very, very soft. Good to have somebody delay the trail for me. It's still pretty dangerous. I'm gonna put the phone away. This is where the sticks go away. And we start to rock climb. Up that way. A little canyon. Do you want to, to go as first? Yeah, this side is better, he said. We were like a vertical fall down. Yeah. <laughs> right down there.
and when the rock climbing is done, we find more snow. I think the hardest part is the hands. Because the snow is cold and the rock is cold. And when you're using your hands to climb, your hands get cold really fast. So it's kind of nice that for a bit I can just walk without using my hands. Even though it's really weird walking on ice and snow in the middle of May, but then again, I am on the mountains. And it skips a bit of a climb. Do not fall. This is the view that we've had the whole time as we climbed up. And now we've reached the pass. And on the other side, there's another valley. And beyond Austria. to be filming but hey Julian Alps Julian Alps yeah on the border between Italy and Slovenia over there yeah I'd rather see okay from now it's not possible to see it but is there uh -huh. And yeah, for living at the Julia Mountains, and Dolomiti is on the right. Over there. Yeah. No, those ones over there. Yeah, Dolomiti. The yeah, all yeah. Uh, that oh, mountains all are Dolomiti. Are Dolomiti. Okay. This is Dolomiti of Sesto, uh -huh. a settlement, uh -huh. and Dolomiti of Cortina over there, uh -huh. and on the left side Dolomiti of Belluno. Uh -huh. uh, here's our cross. And what's the village down below? Sapada. Ah. Yeah, our car is just on the end of the wood. Ah. It's uh, hidden by the wood. So we came from uh, from down from there. From there, yeah. There. Near the bridge. Oh, near the bridge. So yes. over there. Yeah, we did the other bridge on the right side. Uh -huh. You can see the the road, the street, mm -hmm. across. Over here, there's a book that you can sign. There are no signatures? No. no. Yeah. Maybe the previous one. Hmm. Yes. Ah, yeah, there we go. Who was here last? Oh. I'm a bit dumb. Oh, it's very wet. No, it's I heard it's too old. Twenty twenty. Let's start a new book. This one's from this year. Even in winter. Mm. What month? Oh, February. February, March. Ah. Okay. That's today. That's the people yeah. we saw earlier. Just for you guys, however, all this season. Mm. What do I do? Just pull it up? This is it. Cool. Done. We're starting the climb down. My legs are knackered. My shoes are wet and my hands are cold, but I'm really happy. <laughs> now let's make this climb. And I go fast. And remember this amazing view.
how the, the rope starts. We were so lucky that the rain did not catch us up on the rocks where we were rock climbing. That would have been horribly slippery. But when you're good to the universe, the universe is good to you. That's where we're on top of that mountain. Just came down. <sighs> Instead of six hours as planned, it took... How long did yeah. it take? How many hours? More ten? Than, uh, yeah, ten. Ten hours. Now it's six. And I can barely stand on my feet. This was my first proper hike up into the mountains. We ascended over a thousand meters in one go and then descended the whole thousand meters again in one day. And that was a bit too much for me, but it was definitely worth it. Join us for future adventures, subscribe to my channel and come along with me. And travel more, it's good for the soul.